You got to make sure you hold. It's one thing to lie. Lord, 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 I got my issues. Lord, I, I take a sip and I ain't in it. And Lord, I, I sometimes I get high and I deal with the wrong folk and I make bad choices. Acknowledge how messed up you are, but don't be lying and try to make the word sound like it's all right to act a fool. Sometimes folks to make themselves feel better will try to twist the Bible and make it fit how you want to live your life or the choice you want to make. Well, it ain't all that bad. It ain't right, but it ain't wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> I don't care if it's your children. Amen. I, I love you. This is the truth. Amen. The Bible warns about the danger. Because you see, what you got to understand is by, 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 this, by, by, con, by confusing truth, it does not change truth. If I tell you, if I tell you gravity don't work, man, you ain't got to believe no gravity. Who told you gravity? I was in school. They told me an apple fell from a tree. Man, gravity ain't real. <laughs> Just don't step off nothing. Yeah. Because <laughs> whether you ain't, I don't believe in gravity. Baby, gravity believe in you. <laughs> It'll snatch you down because it don't matter what you believe in. Amen. There are laws of the harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever a man soweth. Free. I'm a sword, I'm a sword, I'm a sword, it don't matter. Baby, you're going to reap just what you sow. That's right. You're going to reap with the same kind as what you sow. I don't believe in that law. Just keep playing seed. Mm. When your harvest comes through, you can cry. But the reality is, there are laws that exist. Paul makes it so clear inside this passage. He was like, you should, you should never do anything against the truth. Don't deny the truth. Don't lie about the truth. Acknowledge, speak the truth in love. Speak the truth. Declare somebody, all I can read in the Bible is what the Bible says about truth. Well, that would do I, what, what, what's your personal feeling? My personal feeling can't save you. Right. Only thing can save you is what you can actually read. So declare. I will declare to my child, and I will declare to every parent. Make sure you express to those you love the importance of them learning the value of staying with and holding to the truth. Amen. Every church is not trying to be the same thing in the Bible. All right. All right. And by actually believing a lie, the Bible warns the Thessalonians that God will send you a strong delusion that you will believe a lie. Why? Why would God do that to you? He do that to you because of the value of truth. Yeah. Truth is worth it. Y'all want? Okay, okay. Is it worth it for somebody to tell you, "Give me a thousand dollars, and we're going to invest it, and you we reap back two thousand dollars next year." Someone said, give me $1,000 and we invest it and I'll bring you back $3,000 in two years. And two years later, they found out they spent all the money. Was the truth that there was a, a, a swindler, valuable, or cheap? The truth is always valuable. And a parent, a believer, has to express to folk who follow you the significance of holding to the truth. And truth is not based on what you feel. No. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've been in folks I heard, I've heard recently about someone who I knew about who actually had cancer, and didn't feel it. Went to the doctor, the doctor said, you have cancer. Didn't matter whether they felt it. Truth ain't based on how you feel. The truth is reality. Reality has no bearing on your emotions. What's real is real. You can feel yourself better. I watched these programs last Sunday, last Sunday before I went into service at the, um, uh, at the hotel last Sunday. I expressed that I was watching, watching uh, Pastor Chris uh, in Houston, Texas. And Pastor Chris is dressed all in white. He, he's in white from head to toe. He just, he just he dressed all in white. And every Sunday, Pastor Chris on TV. Uh, every Sunday, Pastor Chris is healing every Sunday. Uh, he saw, I, I saw him do something on TV last week I haven't really seen before. I seen uh, uh, Benny Hinn blow. Mm. Oh my goodness. Hundreds of folk down. Uh, Pastor Chris it. clapped them down. Oh, wow. And they just yeah. lay out. Wow. Pastor Chris said this last Sunday. 
He said, he said, faith comes from hearing. Hearing from the word of God. And Pastor Chris said, you heard that? Faith comes from hearing. And the ability to receive healing in an ear that can't hear comes from the word of God. Believe in the word of God, and God will open up your ear and help your ear, your ear to hear. What? You have to have help to misread that passage. Oh my <laughs> but the point is that that what he said was not the truth. And the dilemma is that there are a lot of people who heard that said it says that. Faith comes from hearing, and hearing, the ability to hear, the ability to hear comes from the Word of God. The Word of God is going to get my hearing back. Yay! The dilemma is, the dilemma is that people are misconstruing Scripture all the time. There is legitimate truth. And you've got to make sure that what you believe in is something you can back up and validate by reading it inside of Scripture. So Paul says inside of our passage, he warns against the danger, he expresses the necessity. He said, I want you to know the value and significance of truth. You should, you should never do anything, you should never do anything against the truth. And if you're not careful, if a member of this church, I don't care where they fall out the, I don't care if they come up out the mud. If somebody come up to you and tell you that something is spiritually okay or not okay, you need to tell them, Back that up with some book. Yeah. 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 Give me some script or don't give me no lip. Because if you cannot back it up with the word of God, it cannot be trusted. So I want you to see, first of all, the child of God is there. First of all, praise the Lord. Tell somebody, first of all, uh, do, do right for the right reason. And tell them, make sure that you're centered on truth. And tell them, I want you to be healthy. Look at verse number 9, verse number 9, verse number 9. Interesting word in verse number 9. Second to this 13, verse number 9. Paul says this. For we are glad when we are weak, and you are strong. And this also we wish, even your perfection. Actually, this word for perfection is once in the Bible, and the Greek word here is not a word for a teleos, which is known as perfection. This word has the idea, uh, uh, it's the word for when a bone will be broken, to put it back in a place where you can function, a net, a, a net is torn, where you can mend the net back where it can be used again. His point being the idea, his point being the idea that my prayer for you is that, is that, you, that God may, may fix what's broken in you. Yes. I have, I have uh, on Monday nights in our K Root class, we're, we're now uh, 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 doing video conferencing with guys in the Bahamas and guys in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Houston, Texas, uh, but the Lance Ross in Houston. We've got, we got some guys I've, I've mentored uh, in Italy and Japan, uh, as well as in um, uh, all across the uh, United States, and have mentored some congregations. As well, but my point is that we all, we are all, we all, we are all people who ought to be having folk in our lives who are developing. In the same sense, sometimes the developing group that you can bring forth, or somebody comes forward on a Sunday and actually has a prayer request, would you pray for me and pray I may grow stronger? Of course, you can't pray for somebody if you don't, you're not even here to know they got a battle. God has put you inside of His family for a reason. This is not about you. There's a, there's a psychological condition and access to in psychology uh, called uh, narcissism. Narcissism uh, is a term for somebody who's narcissistic. Narcissus in Greek mythology was a guy who actually, who, 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 who thought he was so good, he, they, he, they put a curse on him. He looked into the water and saw his own reflection. He fell in love with his own reflection. He couldn't leave the water. <laughs> he died because he couldn't get away from looking at himself. 
Our animals are so narcissistic that we're not put it. See, if you're narcissistic because you're self-centered and self-focused and think that somehow everybody in the world yes. is supposed to look out for you. Yeah. And I'm always floored because I understand sometimes, well, you know, Brother, Brother Harris, people just, I skipped church for three months just to see who was going to check on me. Nobody called me. Nobody called me. I, I've been angry. There ain't nobody, not nobody. Matter of fact, people don't come talk to me. They don't come speak to me. They don't come serve me. They don't come beg me. Oh, what's wrong with everybody? Yeah. I sit all the way here waiting for everybody to make me feel better. <laughs> and ain't nobody making me feel better. You're narcissistic. Yeah. <laughs> and about you. The moment you're in the family of God, the objective and the goal of God is to remake you over to the point that you realize, thank God I was lost and now I'm found. I made all kinds of dumb choices. I was drowning deep in sin and the Lord brought me out. I'm so thankful he brought me out. I want to serve God and everybody I meet and anybody that does me wrong, I'm going to pray for them and ask God to make me a blessing because I'm thankful. But if you think it's all about you, you can't serve nobody. Why ain't you call nobody who has a prayer? But I don't, I, I, I don't call folk in that because they, they call me and ask to pray for me. You got to get out of yourself. There's a bigger mission in this. And the greatest thing, the greatest loss in life is to be useless. What good was it? For people to know you and still be lost. Right. How many people have you tried to talk to about coming closer to the Lord? Amen. Of course, why? I, 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 don't know, I, I, I don't want to go to the job and see, you know, uh, Christian-y. Uh, and I mean, I, 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 I got my own thing, you know, and I, okay, well, fine. What about folk inside the building? Man, you know, everybody here at the building, you know, they, they here, and they 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 Christian-ish. They ain't real like, some folk probably ain't christian either, they Christian-ish. Now, you know, and you talk to these Christian-ish kind of folk, then, you know, they, some of them are all right, some not all right, some, you know, they, I'm, some are friendly, some are not. And I'm, I, 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 was, I was standing against the wall, and I saw, you know, about, about 50 people. I count them. That's about me. Yeah. Say, now work. <laughs> Call they soft for Christian. <laughs> How many did you speak to? I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. He thinks all about you. Yeah. See, just to become a Christian, you may say, brother, but. I, I'm just not a people person. I just don't, you know, I don't like people like that. I mean, I don't like peoples, and I don't, you know, I don't like, I don't like the folk around my, I don't like folk all from business. I don't really know what I'm thinking. I don't, I don't like to talk to people. I don't like to do stuff around people. I don't like to talk to strangers. Even, even folk I know, I don't like the folk that I know. I don't like my own family. I don't like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I just how I am. I, I just, I, I, I'm just, I just how I, I'm just that kind of a person. I just, I've just never been like that. You know, as far as venturing somebody or trying to talk to them about the Lord or getting more, that's just that, that's just not been my thing. And I understand there are some people who just being spiritual is the complete opposite of your nature. I understand that. I'm not no church going person. I'm not no Bible reading person. I'm not no praying person. I'm not no church singing person. I mean, that just ain't me. And I understand that may not be you. But that's why you had to die to become a Christian. 